All right, I'm going to bring the table in a second, but I want to give um, an update here, and, and I'm making no connection to what we saw in Boston um, and this uh, update that I'm going to bring you, but nonetheless, um, there's a significance to it. Senator Wicker, uh, Republican from Mississippi, uh, to an off-site office, um, an envelope was sent to him that included a substance testing positive for ricin, um, and uh, it's not immediately clear um, when it was received, but it believed at this point it went to a field office. Um, but rice is very serious stuff, right? It is. It is. It can be absorbed through the skin um, from castor beans. Uh, it's it's been used before, but uh, it's very a very dangerous substance. I want to touch on some of the things that that Mike brought up, which uh, one of which is that uh, from a technological standpoint, and then we'll talk into trade-offs, but. Uh, from a technology standpoint, is the hope here that the information gathered with the cameras, for example, that it can be in, in near time processed? It's, it's great to have a lot of volume of information, but if it's just overwhelming amount of data, um, it's like finding a needle in a haystack for what you're looking for. Is the thinking that um, the technology is going to evolve to a point here where it will almost categorize and sort it out for you and you'll be able to trace a certain person, their movements, uh, if you can identify a person of interest much easier. Yeah, well, photos are a little bit different than, than sig signal intelligence because there are mechanisms to, to minimize the amount of signal intelligence you need to go through. But I, I'm, I'm sure that the authorities in Boston are going through all those photos as quickly as they can. We've already heard that they've asked anybody from the public that has photos uh, of the yep. areas to provide those. So it, that's going to be a very key piece of, of evidence to find who dropped those bags off. Even if the pictures are somewhat grainy, they're still going to be very important to determine when and how they were placed and who try to find out who put them. Richard, the question of trade-offs, we've had this many times, um, certainly in a post-9-11 world. Um, I, talked to Peter King uh, earlier, and, and he said, in effect, you have privacy in your house, but when you walk out your front door, um, don't expect it. When you go into public areas, um, there's going to be cameras. We're going to, uh, we can triangulate the phone calls. We're going to do whatever we can to monitor the situation, um, and that's just a reality. Now, post-Boston, the questions are from things, like I said, from parades to marathons to going in and out of stadiums, forgetting about the logistics of it. Um, there's this debate that always happens, and it's maybe it's a little early right now, but the debate is how far do you go to get a greater measure of protection when America is so you, built on privacy and liberty? You don't make that decision today. And you don't make it for some really good reasons. One, we don't know enough to know mm -hmm. what we ought to do to prevent because we don't know what the cause was yet. Second of all, you don't make these decisions at the, in the heat of the moment. Um, the the um, American system has a capacity to absorb this event, to absorb the consequences of the event, and to respond with intelligence in ways that leave our principles and our society as close to what we want it to be as we can. So I, my, I, I think it's a good time to say that discussion ought to be held once we know what we're talking about and we don't. The, the, the dominant theme of this whole discussion, I think, has been responsible and cautious. Mm -hmm. And I think responsible and cautious is where the media and the Fair enough. government but, officials But you know, be. Dominic, I just, Boston seemingly did it right. I, they swept the area twice, as I understand. They had bomb sniffing dogs, a large police presence. Um, it's not like people like, oh my God, they dropped the ball here. Um, I don't know what more you can do at a certain point, and that is some of the conversations I've heard, which is they did it right. Um, at a certain point, this might just be the new normal, and this might be part of just the reality of the time we live in that these kind of things, and I think Pat said it off the beginning, this won't be the last one, um, and he knows more than we'll ever know about this, but I get the drift that there's been a lot of things that could have happened that have been prevented in the intervening years. Um, so I, it's kind of that acceptance of the unknown that's the scariest part of this thing. That's what's so wicked about this. Whoever's behind this, they were sending a message that we, meaning them, in their horrible ways, that we can do this anytime we want to, and there's nothing you can do to stop us. But 
I understand the argument about civil liberties, but frankly, those days are gone. It's a new day. And it's my contention that whatever is on those cameras are going to play a large role in finding out who's behind this. This is why we should wait. He's, he, he, he's, he's thinking with his heart, not his head. I'm thinking at, with my heart and my head. And at some point, He's speaking for you, at, at some point, that discussion and that balancing should take place. But we don't know enough to go as far as Dominic just went. We should also be careful because that's you know th that that's a tool that's being utilized after an event. For law enforcement to go in and utilize cameras and listening devices, that still requires court orders. There's still a lot of civil liberty protection there. This is something that you're in the public. They're taking photographs of areas and events happen, and now they're going back to see what they can they can find. It's it's not a targeted investigation against a particular individual violating that person's civil liberties. But you know, and I and I know I'm going to field, and I'm killing our producer on time. But in a way, hasn't this? It hasn't even been a debate. Hasn't this already been settled? I mean, I get up in the morning, I got I choose to have a cell phone. They they can whatever they whatever I say they can choose. A car you buy it since 2006 or seven whatever it is there's a chip in my car I get I get an act that can tell exactly where I was at whatever time in many ways whether I meant to or not I've signed up for this new 21st century America and I, I, maybe it's not even a debate anymore and maybe that's it's exactly just my here point. it's so, already here I, you know and you're right there are some things that still require warrants and everything else but a lot of things uh, we're there already um, and I think maybe this investigation might surprise some folks as to what they can and can't find out just um, uh, with the new realities of today. All right, we uh, will take a break. When we come back, we will head back to Boston uh, for the very latest. We'll bring Andrew back in the program. Please stay with us. I saw quite a few casualties coming back. I saw one guy with his legs gone at the knees, some ankles and feet missing, shrapnel wounds on people on the sides of the head, and other things. It's just uh, we're not good.